Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Back with us today, we have the beautiful Acacia. And on her, I'm creating the perfect beginner-friendly bridal makeup look in partnership with City Beauty. So whether you're watching this because you are wanting to learn how to do your own makeup for your big day, or if you're just looking for some inspiration, I think y'all are gonna enjoy this. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Fenty Skin Fat Water Toner to prep Acacia Skin with. I might be mistaken here, but I think this is the first time I'm using this and I'm pleasantly surprised. I thought it was just gonna be like, you know, like a basic toner and then I'd have to go in with a moisturizer afterwards, but I didn't even feel like I, I needed a moisturizer after I applied this. I feel like it just does a really nice job at hydrating the skin and almost leaving it with a, a sticky kind of finish, which I love because then the foundation is really going to grip onto this. As for the ingredients, it has the niacinamide, witch hazel water, and the Barbados cherry, which will help even the skin tone approve the look of pores and moisturize the skin. The formula of this is also said to help fight shine, which is perfect for this look because we want everything we use after this to lay beautifully without slipping and sliding around throughout the day. Next up, I'm using the Lid Lifting Treatment from City Beauty and using this to prime her eyelids with. I just put a smidge of this onto the back of my hand, applied it on, and I'll further tap it in with my finger. I've grown to enjoy this to prime the eyelids with. It preps beautifully before any eyeshadow. It hydrates without making the eyelids greasy. It prevents the eyeshadow later on from creasing, which is really important here because we really don't want things creasing throughout the day or eyeliner transferring or mascara smudging or anything like that. Also, I, I wanna say that I've noticed this doesn't pill up either, which is most important to me because that can sometimes happen with other primers and skincare products, but this doesn't pill, so I'll even bring this down to the under eye area. I've even used this around the nose and other areas of the skin that I just want to provide a smoother appearance to, and it works beautifully. The blurring microspheres in this formula helps soften the look of any fine lines and enlarged pores and helps keep the eye makeup intact throughout the duration of the wear. After this, I'm using the City Lips Plumping Lip Gloss by City Beauty to prep her lips with. I think this has gotta be the most used product of theirs that I have. This is the clear one, and I'm also using a color gloss from them at the end, but I'm trying to include all of my favorites from City Beauty while they have their sale going on, starting today, November 14th through November 21st. So for the next week, we get 40% off with code SPENCER on their site. I'll include all the details down below so you can check it out. And if you're watching this tutorial after the dates of their sale, the code will still work for 15% off. So you can still take advantage of the discount code. But nonetheless, I had to use their clear plumping lip gloss because it's a must have for me. Now for foundation, I'm using the one and only double wear foundation by Estee Lauder and applying this on with the sponge. Oh, the famous double wear foundation. I've heard time and time again, bridal makeup artists swear by this foundation. And to their point, I can agree with what they say. It does last an extremely long time. It doesn't become oily and greasy throughout the day, and it provides that security to the person wearing it that it's gonna stay in place all day long. Now, it comes in over 55 shades, I believe, and the shade I'm using here is 4W4, which matches perfectly to the center of her face. But as you'll notice, the perimeter of her face is a bit deeper in tone, so we'll rely more on our liquid contour and bronzer for these areas. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> I'm sorry. My voice is going out. I, I, was, <laughs> I was working on a shoot all day and, you know, they had the music blasting and I started to lose my voice from having to talk over the music. And I'm recording these voiceovers at three o'clock in the morning right now, so... I'm sure that doesn't help either, but I really wanted to get this tutorial out in the beginning of the week, so <laughs> we're making it work. By the way, 
doesn't the skin look incredible? For it being a full coverage foundation, it looks like there's nothing on her skin. And can we talk about the camera quality? <laughs> it's picking up every single detail and I love it. Now I did bring this foundation up to her under eyes here just to show you that, you know, it is full coverage enough to use as a concealer if you so wanted. And also to show you how it looks with a lid lifting treatment underneath it. But I'm still going to go in with a slightly brighter concealer in just a moment. Now that we have this applied, I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer in the shade Coco and using this to add definition back to the complexion, including the perimeter of her forehead, the cheekbones, and jawline. I know doing your makeup for, you know, really any big occasion it can be a daunting task, especially your wedding day, but it really doesn't have to be. I know we see tutorials showing you to draw you know, like these um, like dramatic lines and dots all over the face. And while there's nothing wrong with that, if it works for you, you know, I find it does make the contouring step a little intimidating. So to make it easy, just apply a little of the cream or liquid bronzer onto the back of your hand and slowly start building that up with a fluffy brush brush to around the perimeter of the face where the skin naturally gets the most sun. And then use your sponge to blend over everything to assure it's well blended and diffused out. You can see I didn't have to use a lot of this product, but even the tiniest amount in this um, you know, quick step made a big difference, don't you think? Her skin looks impeccable. I love the finish of this. I love the tones we used, and I love how everything is blending together. Now for blush, I'm using these shades from the Feminist Cream Palette from Danessa Myricks Beauty and using this lightly to add a color onto the cheeks. You can really use any shades you'd like from this palette, but the two I pointed out there really spoke to me. The terracotta orange mixed in with this, you know, bright pink is giving me bridal vibes. So we're going with it. And you don't need a lot of this product, by the way. A little does it. This step is just to add pigment to the cheeks before we later intensify it with a powder blush. Next up, for concealer, I'm using the Magic Touch Concealer by Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade 10 and using a tiny amount of this just to the inner corner of the eyes there before we diffuse this out. Remember, I had brought up the foundation earlier to the under eye area, so we really don't need to use a lot of this concealer. The foundation is already giving us enough coverage, so I'm just using this to brighten the under eye more than anything, you know? And while I do like to keep most of the pigment in that inner corner area, I will lightly blend this out towards the temples to give us that beautiful, bright, lifted under eye. To set this into place, I'm using the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder in the shade Blondie, and I'm lightly pressing this into the area we have blended out that concealer. I'm not baking with this just yet. I'm just using this at the moment to set that concealer into place and to mattify this area of the skin before we use the baking technique later on. For the rest of the face, I'm using this Benefit Hula Toasted Bronzer and lightly running this along the same areas of the face we had just applied that liquid contour. This is not only going to reinforce those tones, but also help set them into place. I mean, it's kind of crazy to see this up close knowing that we haven't even used powder on the rest of the skin yet. The foundation looks impeccable. So does the cream blush and contour. Everything is it's just coming together perfectly. So little by little, I'm building up this pigment in the areas I want it most. Alrighty, so remember earlier I was speaking of a powder blush? Well, here it is. It's the Buxom Wonderlust blush in the shade Mykonos, and I'm popping this right onto the apples of her cheeks. Much like what the bronzer did for the liquid contour, this is doing for the cream blush. It's reinforcing it, setting it, and giving it a little extra boost with some pigment. And even though I thought the cream blush looked fine as is, on your big day, you're going to be taking lots of pictures and blush seems to get lost in flash photography. So to be safe, I say add just a little extra more than usual. 
Once I have this blush applied, I'm heading back to the Huda Beauty powder to bake with. Now I do this by applying the powder to the under eye area and along the jawline. We'll leave it on while I do the eye makeup and once I wipe it off later on, it'll leave behind a beautiful hint of brightness to these areas. I know this step can also be a little, um, you know, like a little intimidating, but it all comes down to the powder you choose, making sure the formula works for your skin tone and also the, um, you know, the undertone you choose, choosing a shade that complements your skin tone. I really should do a, a, like a whole separate tutorial on baking and make it really thorough, but um, if you don't feel comfortable with this step, it's completely fine, you all. Just skip it entirely and proceed to the next step, which is the eye makeup. To begin, I'm using this Fenty Beauty Contour Skin Stick and using this as an eyeshadow by gliding this onto the lid before diffusing it out with an eyeshadow brush. I love using contour products on the eyes. Um, in fact, I think the Fenty Skin Stick I bought here is a um, like a travel size or a mini size, which I think are the way to go if you only intend on using it as an eyeshadow base. I only applied it to the base of her lash line before I began diffusing it up and out onto the lid to get that seamless transition. The last time I did this on camera, I said, you know, I love using this technique because it's super beginner friendly and only takes a minute to do. Well, I, <laughs> I read some, um, some comments saying, you know, something about how I only included a part of the footage and that, you know, blending this really took me a much longer in reality or, you know, something like that. So I'm just going to show you the complete footage for this eye here from start to finish, applying on the product to blending it out. It really only takes me about like 30 seconds. <laughs> I promise y'all there's no funny business happening here. I, I, I enjoy a quick and easy eyeshadow look, and this is just, you know, a go-to of mine. And it's great for brides because I think, you know, this, the natural tones in this make it timeless. To intensify the look, I'm using this Armani Beauty Smooth Silk Eye Pencil and running this through her upper lash line. This is gonna add in that touch of drama, but without overly complicating the look. We're not doing a winged eyeliner or anything that requires a lot of precision. We're keeping this easy to apply by gliding this through from end to end before we lightly smudge it out. To smudge this out, I'm taking a smaller blending brush with some black eyeshadow and running that along the same line we created with the eye pencil. This gives a more worn in, effortless vibe to the eye makeup that I think looks so flattering on everyone. And the best part is, as I said earlier, it doesn't have to be too perfect because we're lightly smoking out that liner anyway. Now, I, I don't quite remember which black eyeshadow I'm using here, but you know, truly guys, it, it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you have lying around. It's the technique here that matters most and finding a way to incorporate it to your routine to make it your own. And then for the remainder of the eyelids, I'm using the same bronzer we had used earlier to set the cream contour into place. And I'm also using this to run along the lower lash line as well. You can see here just how well that you know, the eyelid primer is performing now. Nothing has creased and I'm confident this will last all day. Even through our next look, Acacia and I filmed another look right after this. I'll show you some, some pictures here of how it turned out. I wanted to make the most out of this, guys. I had my friend Roman Lopez back, who's the photographer who took these amazing shots. And of course, I have to shout out Adrian as well, who's the hairstylist who did our hair today. I'll link them both down below. I definitely recommend checking them out. They're both so, so talented. I just couldn't be any happier with how these, you know, with how this look came together. So. Next up, I'm having her curl her eyelashes real quick before I use the City Beauty Beyond Mascara to coat her top and bottom lashes with. This is actually a two-in-one formula. It's not only a mascara, but it's also a lash nourishing serum as well. So not only do you have the instant results of longer, fuller lashes, but over time, your natural lashes will actually become fuller and healthier. And of course, should you decide to put false lashes on top, you absolutely can. But I often find that, you know, beginners in makeup don't know how to put lashes on. I mean, heck, 
I do this for a living. I'm a pro makeup artist and I don't even know how to put lashes on myself. So if you can opt for a really good mascara, then go for it. That's what I would do because all it takes is for that inner corner of a lash band to start lifting and poking you in the eye and then your eyes are red and irritated in photos for the rest of the wedding. So just be careful. If you feel comfortable applying on lashes, I support that too. Otherwise, maybe stick to just using mascara or maybe try out lash extensions. That might be a good option too. Okay, next I'm using the Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel and using this to glide through her brows. I do this by running the product downwards to really saturate the brow hairs before running them back upwards to set them into place. I think something looks really nice about keeping the brows so simple and clean for this look. And then for the next look, I'll amp it up a little by, you know, you know, adding something into the brows for a little extra drama. I'm going to try my best to have that tutorial uploaded on Wednesday, but it just kind of depends on, you know, my work schedule these next couple of days. And of course, if I have my voice left to do the voiceovers, but <laughs> we'll see. All right, um, moving right along, I'm wiping away the powder we've let sit there to bake, and you'll see how it just leaves behind a subtle brightness to the skin. It doesn't look cakey or crazy or anything. Now, while this technique doesn't work as well for everyone, it's also not a technique that only looks good on camera, which is what many people proclaim. The lighting here isn't overexposed, there's no filter or anything, so how you're seeing this right now is how it looks in person. Next, I'm using this Oma Beauty Lip Liner in the shade Simone and using this to trace the borders of her lips with. This is the perfect shade to give her lips dimension, and it's a lip pencil I find myself using often. Besides using this along the border, I also like to shade in the corners of the lips to create that soft ombre effect. In fact, even if you left the lips, you know, as is, this would look really great because her lips already have a soft hint of color and shine from that, that lip plumping gloss we used earlier. But we're going to add a little something to it anyway here in just a moment. What I'm adding to this is the City Lips Plumpy Lip Gloss, but this time in the shade Nude, which is this warm toned nude lip gloss. Remember at the beginning when I had used the Clear Plumping Lip Gloss to prep the lips with and I had mentioned using a gloss with a, you know, a color pigment in it? Well, this is it. It's their same best-selling lip plumping formula, but in a peachy nude tone. They have many other shades as well, but something about this one here works so well on so many different skin tones, and it adds such a beautiful hint of color and highlight to the center of the lip. And I kind of like to blend it up into the lip liner for that seamless transition as well. Doesn't that look really pretty? For an extra touch of detail, I'm using this e.l.f. Retro Paradise Glow Up Body Oil and using this to add some glow to the chest and shoulders. One of my favorite things to do in bridal makeup is making the skin glow. There's nothing like having that fresh off the beach, sun-kissed luminosity as all eyes are on you walking down the aisle. As long as you're careful not to get this onto the dress, you, sh you should be fine. In fact, I usually do this step after the dress is on so it doesn't transfer while you know the bride is putting on the dress but you can do whatever feels right for you and then lastly to make this makeup last all day long I'm using the one size until dawn setting spray to set and lock this makeup into place which makes this the final step in how I created this beginner friendly bridal makeup look on our naturally beautiful mom. y'all enjoyed today's tutorial if you did be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel you can also check out more of my work on my instagram at painted by spencer and until next time i'll see you soon